What is up guys, Awesome Nerd Show here, back again with another Monday Night Rewind podcast, going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars, reviewing WWF Raw and WCW Nitro from 20 years ago, back in 97. So this week, again, there is no um, Raw show, again, I think it was on Friday night instead, but there was no actual um, show on Monday night for Raw, so we just have Nitro this week, and this was Nitro number 103, and this was a three-hour show, so it kind of helps make up for the raw um, but this took place on september 1st 1997 and it took place in pensacola florida and so as i said this is a three-hour show so it was kind of a long one to get through um, but the show starts out uh first with a like um throughout the show they keep playing stuff i don't know if i mention them all through here but they keep doing like uh like reviews of arn anderson's wrestling career so they show like old footage of, from you know past years um, I think they start out like old and then move closer in time to like important po- uh, moments or parts in Arn's career and just show that throughout the night. Um, but the show opens up with um, at the commentary table and they're just uh, talking about the events that are going to happen all night, like certain matches and stuff. And then they uh, throw to a recap of um, last week. And so then that pl- replays um, Arn Anderson's whole retirement speech that we got from last week. And then also, um, along with that whole stuff, um, we also get throughout spread, you know, like between commercial stuff and everything before or between batches and stuff. We get uh, comments from other wrestlers and they're pretty much all the face wrestlers. So the good guy wrestlers and they're just making comments um, about how great Arn is and stuff. And it's like filmed back in the locker room. And so we just get footage of them spread throughout the night too, just talking up Arn Anderson. And from there we get into our first match of the night, which is an Eddie Guerrero with Jeff or in Jeff Jarrett with Deborah versus uh, Chris Benoit and Steve Mongo McMichael. So two of the four horsemen and Steve McMichaels is the U S champion in this match. Um, so when it starts out, um, the match first takes forever to start. Cause I think the, the Eddie and, uh, Jarrett grew, uh, side just keeps like stalling and delaying the match from getting uh, started. But once it finally does pretty much anything that, uh, Chris Ben Waller, Steve McMichaels does, the crowd just goes crazy for every single move. Like every time they like just hit punch or kick or anything, the crowd just like starts cheering wildly. And then at one point throughout the match, uh, Chris Benoit ends up hitting Eddie Guerrero with a superplex on, um, off, obviously off the top rope as that's usually what I considered a superplex. But then Eddie ends up, um, kind of later on getting, a, um, I don't know, it's called like a reversal or a receipt or whatever on that, but he ends up doing a superplex. Um, on Benoit out of the ring so like they're standing inside the ring and he suplexes him out of the ring and Benoit just takes a nasty um, spill onto the floor and it looks really bad but he's seemed to be okay he got it back up and did more in the match or a little bit but not much going on else going on there and then uh, so to towards the very end of the match or to finish off the match um, Jeff Jarrett gets uh, Steve Mongo McMichaels into the figure four and then Eddie Grail gets, um, climbs up the top rope to do the um, frog splash off onto uh, Mongo. But as he's climbing up to the top rope, Dean Malenko comes running out and knocks um, Eddie off of the top rope. And then Dean climbs up on the top rope and just jumps off with a splash onto Jeff Jarrett. And so it kind of breaks up the figure four and, you know, also kind of takes Jared out. So Mongo is able to then roll out of the figure four and then roll Jared up for the pin. So um, Benoit and Mongo or Mick Michaels get the win for that match. And then we get Scott Hall and Macho Man Randy Savage with Miss Elizabeth coming out and they come out to the commentary table and uh, Scott Hall saying, um, you know, they're wishing a happy Labor Day to everyone in the U.S. Um, and it's like happy Labor Day from the NWO. And then the NWO, um, and then again, he carries on saying, you know, that everyone's here and watching because of the NWO, which again is not wrong, but it's just weird how he says says that every single week now. And then he's talking about how, um, you know, with Labor Day being a celebration of like workers in America or whatever, he's saying, you know, everybody wants to tell their boss to stick it. So the NWO is telling um, the WCW to stick it. And then he hands the microphone over to uh, Macho Man and Macho is talking about their match tonight saying that they will be Lex and DDP if they can, two can even, you know, work together 
to get out to the ring without fighting because of their whole hitting each other, you know, finishers on each other in the past couple weeks. And so that leads to our next match of Silver King versus Mortis, of course, coming out with James Vandenberg and Wrath, along with so the whole group there. Um, so the start or at the beginning of the match, uh, Mortis ends up throwing uh, Silver king into the corner and silver king does a run up the ropes and like and doing a backflip type thing and lands on his feet and does a super kick um so silver king is showing like with this match is showing a lot more impressive maneuvers like when the past matches i've seen he just misses and botches a lot but it was actually pretty entertaining in this um match with all the stuff he's doing here um and then to finish off the match uh, mortis ends up uh, hitting the flatliner which is just kind of like a um like holding someone up in like a fireman's carry or something but he, he holds him up there then climbs up to the top rope and then just kind of falls off doing a like slam and so that's his move the flatliner and so he hits that and then gets the pin off of it for the whim and then uh james vandenberg ends up getting in the ring after that and he gets on the uh, microphone and calls out the faces of fear because you know they've been feuding the past number of weeks and so the faces of fear come out and they all just start fighting but they end up knocking mortis and wrath out of the ring and it um the faces of fear which are ming and barbarian end up standing tall in the ring that leads then into our first nitro girls segment and then from there we get into a replay um a video from last week and it's the replay of jj dylan talking on the phone while uh me gene and eric bischoff are standing in the ring and he's talking about signing the match of sting versus hogan or giving that as the match and then of course um Sting and up coming out and you know attacking Eric Bischoff and stuff. Then that goes into our next match of Yuji Nagata versus Dean Malenko. Now this match was um like it was pretty decent, but it was really good with like technical holds and um they they were really um, putting holds on each other and working body parts. So it's very um reminiscent of Zack Saber Jr. as you'd see today. So just very um cool and interesting in that aspect. But uh, halfway through the match, um, Jeff Jarrett and Deborah end up running out to the ring. Deborah gets up on the apron, distracting the ref, and as Dean is putting on the Texas uh, Cloverleaf onto Nagata. Um, but as he's doing that, Jarrett gets up on the apron, and so Dean goes at, um, you know, sees Jeff Jarrett and um, lets go of the Texas Cloverleaf and starts to go after him. But um, as he gets over to the ropes, Jarrett like grabs his head and pulls it down onto the top rope, so you know, like choke, choking type thing. But does that, and then that allows um, Nagata to roll him up and get the win off that. So Nagata beats Dean Malenko, and from there we then get to move into hour two, and it kicks off with the Nitro Girls as it usually does when they switch over hours. Um, but then that leads into our first match of La Parka versus Sun or with Sunny Ono versus the Ultimo Dragon or Ultimate Dragon. They keep mixing up the saying. I think in WCW's Ultimate, but wherever um, he is originally from, they call him Ultimo. Um, but to begin, uh. The Ultimo Dragon ends up um, doing like a multiple kip up, like fake out thing on La Parka, which I love La Parka. He's such an interesting character, like his movements and everything he does. But he's like going to attack um, Ultimo Dragon, who's laying on the ground, and Ultimo Dragon starts doing like a whole bunch of kip ups. And so, like, La Parka's like, you know, going to ground, but he does it, so he backs up and keeps like going in and out trying to grab him, but he keeps doing the um, kip ups, and so it's just pretty interesting. Uh, but uh, Dragon ends up uh, kicking La Parka, who falls to the outside of the ring, and then he goes out after him, so they fight out there. Well, while they're out there, Sunny Ono comes over and um, starts kicking Ultimo. Ultimo Dragon, but Ultimo Dragon ends up catching him, and then he goes for a soup to uh, suplex Sunny, like he grabs, you know, with his head under his arm and is getting ready to do a suplex on him. But Leparka ends up attacking um, the Ultimo Dragon instead, and then Sunny ends up, of course, after Leparka grabs, they get back into the ring and they're fighting in the ring. And Sunny ends up grabbing Ultimo Dragon's legs as he's, you know, bouncing off the ropes, causing a distraction. And so Leparka um, runs out and grabs the chair um, to hit Ultimo Dragon. But um, as he goes to hit Ultimo Dragon, Dragon ends up ducking the swing with the chair and then does like a kick type thing to the chair sending the chair into Leparka's face and so that allows Ultimo Dragon to get the win with the pin off of that and then um as the match ends he then Ultimo Dragon then goes after Sonny Ono because that's really who his big like deal is with currently like his problems and so but he gets his hands on Sonny finally and then puts Sonny into the Dragon Sleeper ending off that segment from there we go into another match of 
this time with Buff Bagwell versus Glacier. And so as it's been with many Buff Bagwell matches so far, he's the match starts and he just starts doing all sorts of poses. But since he's facing facing Glacier, he just does a bunch of karate poses, you know, like with flat hands, like chopping at the screen and stuff like that. And he keeps just playing to the camera a whole bunch, like after he'll do a move or something, then he'll go back to the camera and flex and do karate stuff. But throughout the match, uh, Glacier ends up getting a lot of offense on and it is um, in control a lot of the match because you know Buff's playing around so much and everything but um, Buff also came out with Vincent and so while they're out there Vincent ends up grab tripping Glacier while he's running and Buff uh, ends up clotheslining him uh, out of the ring and so while he's outside the ring Vincent ends up um, you know since Buff has the ref distracted Vincent grabs onto Glacier and just shoves him like back first into the ring apron type thing so it um, hurts him really bad or whatever and as later on they're back inside the ring Glacier ends up uh, going for a flying crossbody off the ropes like he runs up the ropes and jumps off but he kind of falls short and ends up just landing on uh, Buff's legs or knees area type stuff instead of you know actually chest to chest type thing and then um, Glacier ends up reversing a slingshot and sending Buff into Vincent who's standing up on the apron trying to get the distraction and so that knocks Glacier off but then as he's going to attack Buff, Buff ends up being able to hit the blockbuster and getting the pin off of that. The next up we have a luchador match of Lizmark Jr. versus Viano 4 who of course comes out with B Viano 5 his brother and um so this match was pretty entertaining because again it's got a lot, a lot of lucha stuff but the Vianos were pretty funny and entertaining but as they usually do if they're not in a tag or even if they're in a tag match the Vianos switch a lot of places so they switch I count at least two times and then while this match is going on just as a little side note uh, Raven ends up walking through the crowd so the crowd's all freaking out about Raven walking through and you can kind of see him for a second but then the crowd dies down and he doesn't get involved or anything but Lizmark Jr. ends up winning um, getting the pin off or by doing a springboard mood salt per so pretty much the lion uh lion salt of chris jericho's move so it's pretty much what he does um but he gets the pin off of that we then get a mean gene interview on the ramp with lex luger and uh, lex uh, you know apologize says you know that he's apologizing to ddp for doing the torture rack and that now they're even since ddp hit him with um the diamond cutter and he calls ddp out to bury the hatchet but no um, but DDP never shows up at all. So Lex just says, you know, we'll just have to work it out in the back and ends up going to the back. We didn't get another Nitro Girl segment, but this time while they're dancing, Disco Inferno um, comes out and they're um, commentary song about he's returned or whatever. I think he was injured. And so this is re his return back. And so he ends up interrupting the Nitro Girls, sort of like how Alex Wright did a few weeks ago. And similarly, that then leads into a match of Alex Wright, who's the current TV champ, and he's taking on humorous Hugh Morris. And so as Alex comes out, Disco Inferno is still out on the ramp. And so they start doing a um, dance off type thing to uh, music. And Disco is like, What kind of music is that? to Alex Wright's like techno y music stuff. And so they're just doing dance off um but then the disco leaves and alex gets the ring and the match starts um so alex starts off by working on uh, hugh's legs so you know to try and get the big guy down to size even though height wise they're about the same but hugh is a lot um like fatter than alex is um at one point hugh um ninja uh, catching alex right with a gorilla press slam so that looked kind of cool just you know picking him up over his head and slamming him down but then throughout the match disco inferno then comes running out and he gets up on the apron and uh hits hugh morris in the back of the head um which then causes the, the distraction and then with that alex is able to hit um hugh with the spinning heel kick as he turns around and then allows alex right to get the pin we then go to the commentary desk um and the commentary people are there obviously with the nitro girls and they're doing another advertisement for the nitro party and then after that advertisement we then get um, this video of sting and it's again it's pretty much the same video as the clash of champions video they did last week showing you know, sting up in the rafters with the like vulture buzzard thing or whatever and so it's pretty much the same thing with a weird little kid voice talking over. Then we get into our another our next match of Stevie Richards versus Damien. Um, so as Damien's walking out to the ring, um, he's 
um, you know, high-fiving people, whatever, and stops by the railing, and Raven is sitting right there in the crowd, and he's, you know, just noticing him. Well, Raven jumps the thing, railing and DDTs Damien and uh, takes him and throws him into the ring. And so, um, apparently, the ref and Stevie Richards didn't notice it this whole time, and so Stevie turns around and notices that uh, Damien's just laying on the ground, so he goes over and starts checking on Damien. You know, he checks, like, his pulse, and then he starts performing CPR on, like, pushing on his chest and, like, goes to breathe in his mouth or something. Um, but Raven's up on the apron at this time, and it, like, you know, Stevie just looks at him. I think Ra he goes over the Raven, and Raven ends up slapping him or something. Someone gets hit, but then Stevie turns around and ends up getting, um, just laying on top of Damien and getting the pin. And then that leads into hour number three, and again, new hour so we got the nitro girls kicking it off and we immediately move into lee marshall's road report and he's coming from milwaukee wisconsin so that's obviously where we're gonna get, have nitro at next week and that goes into a mean gene interview on the ramp with um big bubba or as he's wants to be called now ray trailer because he was kicked out or whatever of the nwo earlier in the year and so he's like you know i've went by a bunch of names as you know I forget he said Big Bubba, probably Big Boss Man. I know he's like the Guardian Angel, and who knows what else, but he's like, I'm, my real name is Ray Trailer, and he's talking about, you know, he was injured by the NWO with, in like a parking lot thing or something, and I, I don't know what happened, because I know when I first started doing these videos earlier in the year, he was in the NWO, but then when I started doing these again, he was not, um, but it says whatever happened, um, he was injured pretty bad, and, um, was told, you know, that he probably wouldn't be able to walk again, so he was had some sort of body injury that threatened his ability to walk, but he said um, by watching the TV and stuff, it motiv he was motivated to walk again so that he could come back and get revenge on the NWO, and that's what he's here for. And so from there, he immediately walks to the ring, and then we get a match of him, Ray Trailer, against Prince Iakea, and it's pretty much just a squash match. I mean, Ray and uh, Ray Trailer, whatever, gets a win with the Bubba Slam, but they say it's probably the now the Trailer Slam or something but it's just like a black hole slam i think that abyss does or something is pretty much what it is but it was a squash match but prince ik did get some offense in but just he never really got the upper hand fully we then go back to me and gene on the ramp for an interview and he's you know calls out the four horsemen well, people walk out and it turns out that this is the whole NWO acting as the Four Horsemen skit. And so they're pretty much coming out doing the same thing as of Arn's retirement speech of last week. So we've got Six or X-Pac as Ric Flair, Conan as Steve McMichaels, and Buff Bagwell playing Kurt Henning. And so they're in the ring and uh, Rick or Six in this case calls out Arn Anderson, his best friend, because they're obviously, you know, wanting an answer of whether Kurt, aka Buff, is going to join the um, Four Horsemen or not. And so Flair calls out Arn Anderson, which turns out to be Kevin Nash. So then he comes out and pretty much does his whole retirement speech. But um, they're portraying Arn, one, as he's overweight because Kevin Nash has like a pillow or something in his shirt making him fat. He's, of course, is balding. He has a neck brace on. He's carrying a styrofoam cooler that he says is full of beer. And he's walking all weird so like he can barely walk. Um, so they're just making fun of Arn Anderson here the whole time. Overall, the segment, it was pretty funny i thought in parts especially with some of the stuff that arn or kevin nash says um but overall <laughs> like it was funny but it wasn't great at all like some of the stuff was just dead and it's like this is just stupid but kevin nash you know starts talking and he's pretty much just making fun of arn anderson's drinking and his looks and, you know making fun of that he's in bar all the time he couldn't drink instead of drink, dropping his water bottle or whatever in the gym when the guy hit him he said it was like a fat ugly lady in a bar hitting on him and he dropped his beer and stuff. But yeah, just making fun of him the whole time. And then he offers Kurt his spot. and But he says, you know, not a liver spot, not the dog spot, or anyone else's spot, my spot type thing. So again, making fun of the whole spot thing. And Kurt accepts or whatever, and the whole segment ends. And then from there, we get into a match of Chavo Guerrero versus Chris Jericho, which this was really weird. So Chris Jericho has some weird, normally, some weird generic music that I don't... I, I find it kind of interesting. Like, it's not great, but I think it's like enjoyable and catchy type stuff so every time here i know it's him well when it, um you hear the music start playing before you see who it is and i'm like that music sounds really familiar and it goes in it's chris jericho and i'm like wait that's his wwf music so it's like it's old break the walls down music type thing so it's really weird that they like dubbed that over 
the top of it and gave him that music but it was interesting anyways um so we get into the match which never really becomes a match but as the match starts Eddie Guerrero comes out to the ring and he gets in the ring confronting Chavo saying you know that, that he should let him have the match and that Chavo's just a disgrace to the Guerrero family well, while he's doing that Scotty Riggs then comes walking out the ring saying you know that I'm think I deserve a title shot and everything well then from there like every other cruiserweight in the world starts coming out to the ring and they're all in the ring just like arguing with each other well then they start fighting and so becomes what looks like a battle royal so there's just a whole bunch of people in the ring fighting with each other and then people just start getting thrown out and then as more people get thrown out the people outside the ring start fighting with each other out there and the ring uh amount the ring um just starts dwindling down until it ends up with Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho alone in the ring and Eddie ends up uh getting the frog splash um or he hits the frog splash on Chris Jericho but he knocked Chris Jericho out with the title and then laid the title on top of Chris Jericho's face and then did the frog splash onto the title on Jericho's face so he just kind of smashed his face into the title next up we then get Hulk Hogan coming out with Eric Bischoff and of course they come to the ring and they're just talking about the whole sting stuff and while well, Hogan's giving his whole stuff or whatever talking about Sting. He keeps mentioning that Sting's wearing an old uh, wrinkly trench coat and that, you know, he could get better and everything and stuff. And he ends up calling out Sting to come, uh, that he wants to beat Sting up and everything. And the crowd keeps chanting, we want Sting. And Hogan's like, yes, we want Sting. He should come out or whatever. But Sting never comes out. So they call out J.J. Dillon and he comes out. Well, as soon as he gets into the ring, Hulk Hogan immediately just starts attacking J.J. And he ends up uh, doing the leg drop on him. And then he gets on top of him and is choking him. And then he starts, at this point, uh, Vincent ends up um, walking out and he's holding the spray paint can and he hands it over to either um, Eric or Hogan. I can't remember which one it was. But they roll JJ over and end up spraying NWO onto his back. And then Hogan just poses and stuff. And so they leave JJ just laying in the ring to end that segment. And then we get into our main event for the night. Which is Scott Hall and Macho Man of course coming out with Miss Elizabeth. And they are taking on Lex Luger in DDP. And so immediately they, you notice in um, commentary makes point that DDP and Lex Luger are not working as a cohesive group. When they start out um, DDP is standing in the opposite corner of Lex Luger. You know not wanting to be near him. And then as the match starts out, um, DDP starts out and then he doesn't um, tag Lex in at all. Um, so DDP's just getting destroyed throughout the match. And of course, Macho and um, Scott Hall are tagging in and out the whole time, just keeping up the strength on DDP. But then he's finally able to get a comeback and tags in Lex Luger, which he takes out uh, Macho Man and Scott Hall. And as he's going for the bionic elbow on Scott Hall, Scott Hall ends up uh, ducking and he ends up nailing DDP with his elbow. And so again, continuing on more problems with that. And then Lex is, uh, picks up Macho Man and gets him into the torch rack and is torturing him. But neither of them are the legal people so he's staying there doing some just like doing the torture rack well at this point scott hall ends up covering up ddp who's knocked out from the elbow and so the ref counts to three and so scott hall and macho man end up winning but lex luger thinks he won because you know he's got macho man up in the torture rack so he thought macho man gave up and so that is how the show ends with confusion in the ring and so continuing on this DDP Lex Luger debacle type thing. But that's going to be it for the Monday Night Review this week. Covering Nitro number 103 from September 1st, 1997. Again, no Raw for this week. But I believe it does return next week. So we'll go, um, continue covering all of that. So that was this Monday Night Wars review from 20 years ago. So again, if you like this podcast, please leave a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have down below. And hit the red subscribe button to catch um, a ep new episode every single week. Do all that that and we'll see you next time.